Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Slackwood Church. Whether you're here with us on our beautiful church grounds or worshiping with us online, we're pleased that you're here. I would draw your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. There are a number of groups meeting after worship today. And are there other announcements that should be made? Debbie. She's watching online. And happy anniversary to Doug and Debbie Moore. 49 years. Lovely. Other announcements? You know, uh, yes, Star. Okay, so Truth and Reconciliation Thursday night at 7. The, wor the uh, Christian Education Meeting after worship today will be in the nursery room. Others. Then I will simply tell you that playing the role of Maureen Rickman today is Tara Parony. <laughs> and let us worship God. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship printed in the bulletin. A word of encouragement from prophet to people. Live a life that is full. Build plant, eat, love, multiply. We enter into worship today with hope in our hearts. To worship a God who reminds us that we can live as God desires. Come, let us worship God. Let us pray. Lord of love and light, shine through our darkness, bringing us hope. Open our hearts for the journey our eyes for the light, our spirits for the peace which you bring. Fill our mouths with laughter and speech with shouts of joy, that we shall revel the love with which you surround us. We offer this prayer in the name of the one who is coming into the world, bringing your hope, love, peace, and joy, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
may be seated. Come, let us faithfully confess the ways in which we have failed, placing our trust entirely in the faithfulness of Christ. Let us pray. Lord of all, eternally faithful, we confess that we have denied you. We have hurt others with our wrangling word. We have acted as if we are ashamed of your truth. Free your word within us. Restore our faith. Rebuild what our careless and hurtful words have ruined. We pray this, confident in the one who, if we are faithless, remains faithful, Christ Jesus. Amen. Truly the salvation that is in Christ Jesus is a spacious place with eternal glory. Beloved of God, I declare to you the salvation of Christ Jesus is yours, as is the forgiveness of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, your word cannot be chained, so reveal to us your truth. By it, inspire us to renewed faith, and through it, guide us to work for you. Amen. The first scripture lesson is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, we will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our text for this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 1 and 4 through 7. Listen for the word of the Lord. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, to God. Thanks be to God. Well, it's a beautiful morning to be worshiping with all of you outside today. Before we get started, will you please pray with me? Holy Lord, we are thankful that you are a God who wants to be a part of our story. This morning, show us the ways that you want us to cultivate hope in our lives. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. The setting of our text today is the destruction of the temple and the exile of the Israelites to Babylon. I think it's hard for us to understand how incredibly devastating exile is to the Israelites. Their home is destroyed and they are forced to move to a foreign nation one that does not understand their God or their customs, and they have no way of knowing when this will all be over. The people are separated from their land. The destruction of the city of Jerusalem sets off a series of deportations of people to Babylon, and so some of the exiles in Babylon and some are still in Judea, and so not all of the people separated from their land they are also separated from their families. By the waters of Babylon, we wept for thee, Zion. This is heartbreaking. Just before this text, the prophet Jeremiah clashes with a man named Hananiah, who claims to be a prophet. Hananiah prophesies that the exile will be over within two years. Jeremiah calls him a false prophet and says that he will be wiped off the face of the earth, which he is. The people want out of this. And so it makes sense that Hananiah would prophesy a quick victory. Jeremiah is not exactly lauded for his prophecies. And in our text, Jeremiah writes to the people in exile. Again, he does not prophesy a quick victory. In this world where things often feel broken, I think many of us try whatever we can to get quick hope or to reach for hope quickly. We want to listen to the Hananiahs of this world. I do this often, maybe you do too. When I feel sad or heartbroken, I look for signs of hope that I can point to. These are often reflected in creation. You've heard them before because I talk about them a lot. The first signs of spring, the way that creation is constantly shifting and renewing, the way that the sun rises every morning and warms our faces. But I also think about the way that we love each other well, the way that even in the hardest and most difficult times, we try to lift one another up. See, all of these things are good and holy but if I'm being honest, I'm not sure that our text is pointing us in that direction today. It feels a little bit like God is telling the Israelites, hey, you're going to be stuck here for a while, so you may as well make the most of it. 
I want to be honest. I read this text and like immediately grabbed for the hopeful parts. How beautiful that God tells the Israelites to plant things. But hope doesn't just come out of nowhere, friends. And so today we're going to wrestle just a little bit with the hard stuff in this text. We're going to talk about hope today, yes, but we are not going to rush into it. And so what does it mean that God says to all the exiles I have sent into exile? If God has truly sent people into exile, why doesn't God just free the Israelites? See, this text seems to be saying that God has done this, that the destruction that they face, that the pain that they're experiencing, that the exile that they're stuck in is at least in part from God's hand. Does God do this kind of thing to God's people? To be honest, I don't have a straight answer for you. And I think anyone who gives you a straight answer on this is probably too confident about who they think God is. But what I do know is this, that in a broken world, we often try to make meaning of things. We try to understand why something is happening and it makes a lot of sense that the Israelites would attribute this to a God who they perceive to be like maybe just a little bit angry with them. And what I also know is that the writers of Hebrew scripture wrestle with this on like an awful lot. Remember Job, how all of his misfortune came because God allowed it to happen? One of the most common themes in scripture is that people are trying to make meaning of suffering. And I don't know that any of them hit the nail on the head, but they're all trying. And what I also know is that God is a loving and a just God. I know that God cares for us. I know that God is always trying to enter the story with us. And so maybe, just maybe, part of the hope that we're supposed to have is the hope that God is always trying to redeem the brokenness in our world. We don't always see that working itself out, but part of faith is having hope that this redemptive work is always happening. Friends, I think if we're being honest with ourselves, lots of us have been here. We get stuck in places that we don't wanna be in and we wonder how long we're gonna be stuck there. And we wonder why any of this is happening at all. How many of us are stuck in our own versions of exile where we feel separated and isolated? And so what does this text actually say about hope? All right, we've lived in exile for a little bit. What does this text say about hope? Sometimes hope happens in bursts. Maybe you notice something really beautiful or you witness an act of kindness. Maybe you just get a boost from seeing the people that you love. And these things are really, really lovely and they're important. But our text is not talking about this kind of like quick hope. It's talking about a cultivated and a slow hope. Right? Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Be fruitful and multiply. Do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city. In its welfare, you will find your welfare. See, our text tells the Israelites to start building their families, to start planting gardens. It takes time to see yield in a garden. It takes time and cultivation and patience to build community with your family and with others. Nobody builds a house in a day. I love being able to preach outside and worship with you all outside because I'm often reminded of the hopefulness of creation. There's hope all around us here today. But you know what I'm really reminded of? Is the way that someone came before me and had to have hope 
that their labor, that their cultivation would turn into something good. The way that someone planted a tree and hoped that it would grow and the way that I get to see that in all of its glory and so do all of you. Friends, the things that give me quick bursts of hope are often things that someone at some point said, hey, let's cultivate this into something really beautiful. See, when we're in exile, we cultivate hope in the darkness and the despair so that the people who come after us have a real tangible sense of God's work in this world. We work to cultivate hope so that people don't have to wonder if hope is worth having. And here's the thing, this is not always easy. I don't think it was easy for the Israelites in exile to hear that they needed to start building a life in a strange land. This is not always easy. I don't know if you had a similar experience to me last winter, but many of the people that I love, including myself, had a really hard winter last year. Lots of people experienced depression or social isolation. And I think a lot of us really struggled with feeling isolated from our communities and from our supports. There's a lot happening last winter. And as the days get shorter and colder, I'm noticing that myself and some of the people that I've talked to about this are like a little bit worried about this happening again. And I think that this is a perfect time to start talking about cultivating hope in the middle of darkness. This is the perfect time to start thinking about how you might cultivate hope for yourself. Maybe you're not planting trees. I know that I'm not planting anything because I kill it and that doesn't feel like cultivating hope to me. But maybe you have someone that you check in regularly with. Maybe you make it a goal to move your body every day. Maybe that's sitting up. Maybe that's wiggling your toes. Maybe that's going for a walk. Maybe you go to an event that you don't really feel like going to, but you feel better afterwards because you've seen the people that you care about. Friends, let's start to find ways to cultivate hope even when things get hard. Because when things get better, and they usually do, the faithfulness that we've had will remind others that there is always hope in this world. I think there are a lot of ways to view the command that the people seek and pray for the welfare of the city. It's maybe a little bit difficult to like wrap our minds around. I don't think that God is saying that the Israelites need to assimilate into the city of their oppressors. But I think that these little actions of hope bolster the welfare of the people around them because God is always at work. God is always doing a creative and redemptive work both among the people who are exiled and among their enemies. See, building hope is building the welfare of the city. Just like building hope is building the welfare of your families, of your communities, of your church. This text teaches us to cultivate hope in places where we might not find it. But I think it's worth saying that the source of hope is a God who is loving and just, a God who cares for us, a God who is always trying to enter the story with us. And so friends, today, let's find hope in a God who cares for us, even when we don't understand all of the logistics. Let's move even when we don't feel like it. Let's plant gardens so that we can see the blooms in the spring. Let's tend to our families and our friends who give us hope in the beautiful community of God. Friends, today, let's cultivate hope. Amen.
Friends, let us pray. Holy Lord, we come before you today and we need your grace and your peace and your hope. We are humbled by the things that are happening in this world and we seek you in hope and in faith. See us in the moments where we feel like we have given all that we have and be present with us and help us to tend to others. Help us to see the people that we've excluded from our own communities and give us eyes to see the image of God in every person that we meet. Lord, we're thankful that you've made each one of us different and that we all have different gifts to offer this community. We are thankful that you encourage us to grow in our faith and in our hope through the difficult moments of our lives. Lord, we pray for guidance and direction because we know that your Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. This morning, we lift up our joys and celebrations along with our sorrows. And so we give praise and thanks for Kate's birthday and for Debbie and Doug's anniversary. We also know that many of us are weary, and so we pray for a sense of grace that heaviness can't take away from us. Help us to be still and know that you are God. And so we pray for a sense of trust for Jeff and Kim and Jennifer and Jenny. Lord, we know that this life is not always easy, but you tell us that the beloved of the Lord rest between your shoulders. And so we pray for that rest for those who are experiencing difficult times. And so we lift up those who are experiencing difficult times globally and in our country, we lift up prayers for those who are in Southwest Florida, for those who are first responders, for those who live in the area. May you give them peace and patience and strength to endure the road ahead. We also lift up prayers for those who are enmeshed in global conflict. We pray for those in Ukraine. We pray for those in countries that are being oppressed. And we also pray for those who are fighting against oppression in their own countries. We lift up prayers, especially for the people of Iran. Lord, we lift up prayers for those in our community, specifically who are going through difficult times. May you give them rest and let them know that you walk with them. May you remind them that their church family loves them and that we pray for them. And so we lift up prayers for Dottie, for Celesta, for Reagan, for Faith and Jill, and Dolores, and Laura, and Vince, and Maggie, Ebby, for Judy, for Lynn, for Nona, for Bob, and Darlene, and Kyle, and Ricky. We lift up prayers for Herb, for Trisha's mother, Pat. We lift up prayers for Joan and Pat, for Jackie and Jimmy, for Kathy, for Brenda, for Beth and Jack and Arlene and Marilyn and Mylan. We pray for Mark and for Layla. And now let us pray in the way that God has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, our God is a generous God, and so we give in response to what God has done for us. You can put your offerings in the trays as they pass by, um, or you can send them to the church at 2020 Brunswick Avenue, Lawrenceville, New Jersey, 08648. Let us give and live generously in response to all that God has done for us.
Father God, how often we take for granted all that we have, how often we fail to recognize how blessed we truly are. And so take these gifts that we give in response to your generosity and use them to further your mission and your ministry in this hurting world. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, friends, as you go throughout this week, it is my hope that you would find ways to cultivate hope in the small things, to cultivate faithfulness in those things, and to know that God will grow your hope into something that gives the other people around you hope as well. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. It's in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.